We're talking all about the new book that's come out called What Did Jesus Drive? All about handling public relations crises. Written by Jason Vines here to talk about it and my colleagues Peter DeLorenzo and Tom Walsh. And Jason, you get into in your book attacking Joan Claybrook, the former head of NHTSA, for this alleged accusation of sudden unintended acceleration where supposedly cars just accelerate out of control for no rhyme or reason. Well, the safety advocates, as they call themselves, uh, are nothing more than shills for trial attorneys. And so they've tried to uh, bring this old chestnut up all the time, first with the Audi 5000, then with the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which I had to handle, then recently in 2010 with Toyota and, and I believe Lexus. There are no gremlins in cars that make them go out of control. Uh, it's either a mat sticking the accelerator pedal or that's it or the person with their foot on the wrong pedal. Because every story that we heard in Audi, we heard in Jeep, we heard in Toyota is, the harder I pushed on the brake, the faster I went. That's because you were on the accelerator pedal. Uh, the plaintiff's bar loves this story because it's usually horrific crashes, whether in a car wash, and the car wash jockey gets in with one cheek on, one cheek off, wet boots, hits the wrong pedal, and in a second and a half, he's out in the street killing people. Um, it's nothing to do with the vehicle. There's no emittance of any kind, no electronics. It's people with their foot on the wrong pedal. And we go through this, it seems like about every five or six years where an automaker is brought to task, is sued and sued and sued and sued. And then we find out at the end of the day, people put their foot on the wrong pedal. Now, automakers have a role in this. Don't put the pedals so close to each other. Uh, in the case of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, we uh, installed retroactively uh, sh brake shift interlock, which means you had to put your foot on the brake before you could turn the car on or shift it. Um, that was a good fix. It was a fix that cost us a lot of money, but it was the right thing to do because we put the safety of our consumer first. Toyota, you think, and this is what mine boggles the mind, Toyota on the top of its game in 2010 was not prepared for their crisis. They just handled it so badly. In fact, memos got out that they saved $100 million by avoiding a recall of any kind, and almost bragging out of the Washington office. Uh, the same thing I say in my book, BP got caught with their pants down with the Horizon Deep Well thing. They weren't ready for a crisis because they didn't tell their people how to react and to how, how to handle the customer first and foremost. Well, there's a little bit of taste of this discussion that we're going to have on Jason's new book. Be sure to tune into AutoLine this week for the full discussion about what we're talking about.